Do you want to learn how to add categories to your blog or product website? Then stick around to find out how. I'm Thomas with Braintrust Digital. I'm a full stack web developer obsessed with learning. If you're interested in learning web development, please consider subscribing below. And if you know anyone who you think may be interested in this type of content, I'd really appreciate it if you'd consider sharing with them. In this AWS Rails tutorial, we're gonna walk through how to add categories to our Rails application. We're gonna create a has many through relationship so that we can associate categories and videos. A category can have many videos and a video can have many categories. Next, we're gonna add the select to JavaScript plugin. This plugin makes it really easy to manage from an interface perspective, the many-to-many -many relationships. So this is just gonna clean up the way you select these within the form. Finally, we're gonna clean up the views. We wanna add the categories to our video show page. We're also gonna make these clickable links. When you click the link, you're gonna go through to a category filter page where you'll see all the videos associated with that particular category. Don't worry, we'll walk through all the steps in the video. So with that being said, let's get into the tutorial to walk through how to add categories to your Rails application. As you can see, we've got our app running locally. The first thing you want to do is actually create a Git branch. Git will act like your coding safety net. I typically do this towards the uh, end, right before we deploy, but really it's most appropriate to create your Git branch when you start your feature. To create this new branch, you're going to run get checkout dash B for branch. We're going to call our branch categories. Now that we're on our new feature branch, we're going to go ahead and start writing our code. So the first thing we're going to run is the scaffold command. So we're going to run Rails G for generate scaffold. And then we're going to call our data model category. And we're going to give our category model a name field. That's going to run our database migration, create our model, and as well as some views and routes for us. Next, we're going to go ahead and create a join table. We're going to be joining categories to videos using a has many through join, meaning category can have many videos and a video can have many categories. So the next command we're going to run is Rails G migration, create join table categories videos, and we're going to pass in category and video. This is very specific syntax. The create join table is telling Rails that we are in fact creating a join table between the two models that will follow. Next, you're going to include the two models alphabetically sorted and pluralized. So you'll see categories videos. Finally, you're going to pass in the database column name. So it's going to be singular and lowercase category and video. We'll go ahead and hit enter. So before we run these migrations, let's go ahead and check them out in sublime text. Inside our application, we're going to go to DB migrate. First, you can see the categories migration. Not a lot going on here. We're just creating the categories table and giving it the name string. Next, probably the more interesting of the two migrations is the join table migration. So here you can see that special command, create join table, categories videos, as well as two indices that are currently commented out. Let's go ahead and uncomment those. The database index is used for performance, so we're gonna wanna keep these uncommented. These can also be used to validate the uniqueness of a record, but we're not gonna focus on that for now. So the next thing we need to do is run these migrations with Rails DB colon migrate. This will add our new categories database table as well as our join table. Next, we need to go ahead and work on the models to create these new relationships. So the first thing we're gonna do is create our join model. To do so, we're gonna open up app models and we're gonna create a new file. Now I'm gonna paste in the code and we can walk through it. We're creating a new model called categories video. The naming of this model is really important here. As I mentioned with the database migration, you're gonna to wanna to have these alphabetically sorted. This one's a little bit different though. The first model's name needs to be pluralized, while the second needs to be singular. This is a common point of error, especially for new users. I've done this one uh, dozens of times. You get these weird errors, so definitely check your naming here if you run into some strange errors. So we're going to go ahead and save this file. You'll follow that same naming convention, just split the words with an underscore. It's going to be categories, plural and then underscore singular video dot rb. That's the name of our join model. That join model is going to belong to a category and it's going to belong to a video as well. Next, we need to add our relationships in the categories 
and videos models. First, if we open up our category model, we're gonna add two lines here. First is the has many categories videos. We're gonna say it has many videos through categories videos. This tells Rails that we're using a has many through relationship and we're going to use the new join model to find all of the videos related to this category. Next, if we open up our videos model, we're going to add a similar series of relationships. Here again, has many categories videos. This time it's going to be has many categories through categories videos. The next thing we're going to need to work on is our routes. Under config routes that are B, we're gonna make a few minor changes here. This isn't strictly necessary for the task of adding categories to your Rails application, but rather specific to our implementation. In our current app, if you've been following along, we have users with various levels of permissions. So in our case, regular users can see and interact with the videos and eventually categories, but we don't want them to be able to create, edit, or destroy videos and categories. First thing I'm gonna do is just move this categories resource down near video from an organizational perspective. Next, you can see in a previous tutorial, we prevented regular users by limiting only the index and show actions and then running a Lambda to validate that the user was in fact an admin to provide the additional routes. This is a kind of a rough solution, as I mentioned at that time. If a regular user tried to visit the new or edit or destroy routes, they would get a 500 error since the route would not exist as they are not an admin. In this case, it would be a lot cleaner if we could just redirect them back to the homepage and let them know that they can't do that. So what we're gonna actually do here is change the videos route and then get rid of this conditional authentication. Instead, we're gonna create an application controller method that does this check for us. This will make it a lot more reusable in the future. So we'll go ahead and save our routes now. So if we open up our controllers and then open up application controller, here we can add a new method, authenticate admin. This method will redirect back to the root URL with a message from the greatest movie of all time if the user is not an admin. We'll go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Adding this in our application controller will allow us to use this method in other controllers, in effect giving us the same restrictions as the routes that RB restrictions gave us, but with a much cleaner end result. Instead of receiving a 500 error, the user will just be redirected back to the homepage. All this code does is create the functionality. We're not actually using this functionality. To do so, we would want to open up our categories and videos controllers and utilize this method in each. But First, I want to demonstrate on the front end so you can see what this looks like without and then with the method enabled. In our application, we're currently logged in, so I'll go ahead and log out. Next, we can visit the new categories route. As you can see, I am not logged in. I'm looking at the categories index page. I can click the new category button and have the ability to create a new category. Obviously, you would not want a logged out or non-admin user to be able to do this. So let's go ahead and lock it down now by using that new application controller method. Here, we will open up the categories controller. We're going to call this in a new before action. Our before action will call the authenticate admin method. Here, we're gonna scope this to only the controller actions that we want to lock down. So new, edit, update, and destroy. We're gonna allow users that are not logged in or users that are logged in but not an administrator to see the index and show pages for our categories and videos. So now if we save this, flip back over to the browser, and a refresh, you can see we were redirected back to the home page. Exactly what we want to happen. Let's go ahead and quickly make this change in the videos controller as well. Again, you can paste in the same code it'll work the same way. The end result there is we have a lot cleaner routes as well as a lot cleaner end user experience. Instead of hitting a 500 error, now they're just redirected and they know what happened. They try to do something they couldn't do. Flipping back over to the browser, you can see I'm now logged back in to an admin user. As you'd expect, if you click new category and create a new category, everything will work like normal. There's nothing fancy here. This is just regular Rails scaffolding working as you'd expect. We're not gonna focus on this for now. Instead, we're going to focus on videos. This is the primary place where we're going to use this categories relationship. So when we're creating or editing our videos, we're gonna to wanna to throw in a few tags. I've covered this in a previous tutorial, but when you're logged in as an admin, you get to see these edit links on the videos page. 
So let's go ahead and click one now. Here's the form we're gonna be working with. We need to add a new field to be able to tag our various categories. Let's flip back over to Sublime Text and open the videos form. Here I'm gonna paste over all the code and we can walk through it. All these changes above are just to add Bootstrap styling. It's just gonna make it look a little better since we've already installed Bootstrap in a previous tutorial. If you need help installing Bootstrap into your Rails application, I'll link that tutorial in the card as well as the description below. Here's what we're primarily concerned with, the collection select for categories. A couple things to note here, you're gonna to want to pass in category IDs, plural. Next, we're gonna pass in all of the categories as options. Here, you could limit this with scopes or filters as you see fit if you only wanted a subset of categories to appear. In our case, we want them all to appear and we want to order them by name. It'll just be easier to find stuff. Next, we're passing the ID to the back end, but we want to see the name on the front end. Finally, you can see an options hash where we're adding a couple of classes as well as multiple true. This means we want to be able to select multiple categories. You may note in the class that we have select two. This won't do anything yet, but we're gonna use this class as a hook to know when we should enable the select two plugin, which will allow for much cleaner multiple collection selects. So let's go ahead and save this and see what these changes do on the front end. Once we refresh, you can see the bootstrap changes clean things up a bit, and then here is the new categories field. If we tried to select a category and submit, it would get filtered out by strong parameters. So we'll head into the videos controller and we'll add the new parameter. In app controllers, videos controller, we're gonna scroll down to the video params. Here in the video params, we're gonna to need to add one new parameter, that category underscore IDs parameter that we tagged in the collection select. Note the syntax here as it's very specific. You're passing in the symbol, category IDs, then you use a fat arrow and an empty array. So with that, we should have enough to get this working. If we flip back over to the browser, select test, and then click update video, we should see our video was successfully updated. If we scroll back down and click edit, we should see that test is still in fact selected. Off camera, I quickly added a second category to show that you can in fact select multiple. This will help prove our point on why we need select two. You can click each category, but you or your users have to remember that you need to command or control click to be able to select multiple. Once you do so, you can click update video. You can see our videos updated successfully, and then we can confirm again that both are selected by clicking edit. As you can see, both are selected. This is just an odd interface. There's gotta be a better way. That's where select two comes in. To add select two, we're gonna go back to the terminal and run yarn add select. Two. Now that this has finished adding the package, we need to go back over to our application pack and ensure that we require select two. So here in app, JavaScript, packs, application.js, here below our bootstrap import, we're going to import select two as well as the CSS styles. This will add the JavaScript and styling for select two. Next, we need to instantiate select two. As I mentioned previously on our forms, we added this class select two. This is a common pattern I follow. So we'll trigger off of that class. Anytime we see something with the class of select two, we're going to want to instantiate the plugin. To do so, we'll just enter down a few lines, grab anything with the class select two and instantiate the select two plugin. I found this to be a really easy method. That way, anytime you have collection selects and you want to use this plugin, you simply add that class. Now that that's complete, let's flip back over to the browser. We're gonna go ahead and refresh. As you can see, the categories collection select is much cleaner looking. You have little X's you can click as well as a dropdown. Here you can click on the item or you can just start to type things out and hit tab. This is a much better user interface especially if we decided to open this functionality up to other users. You don't have to remember to, to press a special key while selecting multiple. Again, we can confirm this works by clicking update video, scrolling back down and clicking edit. As you can see, both are still selected. The next thing you'd typically want to do at this point is go in and create a bunch of categories and start tagging your videos. Typically, when I have a bunch of data that I want to associate with a new feature, 
I will, instead of completing that task via the interface, complete it in a Rails task. I'm gonna open up libtasksoneoff.rake. I've covered creating one-off tasks in the past when we talked about creating our different user roles. This is gonna be very similar, so I'm just gonna go ahead and paste the code in now. So the typical pattern that I'll follow is create a task with a logical name. In this case, we're gonna call it create categories. The first block up top is an array of categories and video IDs. So here you can see I'm creating categories for AWS, Ruby on Rails, DNS, and so on. Next, you can see I've gone through the videos and found the appropriate videos to tag and then listed them in the video underscore IDs array. One important item to note here is the fact that I'm using very specific IDs here. You can't always guarantee that your production IDs will be the same as your local IDs. Unless, of course, you're using the Capuchino DB Tasks gem. So in this case, I do happen to know that these will work as my local data is always pulled from my production database. If you wanna see how I created the ability to pull my production database down locally, then check out the video about Capistrano DB tasks that I'll link in the card as well as the description. A safer way to do this would be to grab a unique identifier outside of the ID that I have on the videos. For example, the YouTube ID. I know that that's not gonna be replicated and I know that that will be the same across all environments. So this is just a quick and rough way to get this functionality up, but I wanna point out that constraint. Below you can see I'm looping through the category array of objects. In this case, I'm considering name my unique identifier. So if I run this task multiple times, I will only have one AWS. If I instead change this in some way, that would create a new category. So that's the point you want to pay attention to. Whatever you're setting up here, since this is the first or initialize, will be what you're considering unique to this model you're adding. After I've found or initialized a category with that name, I'm gonna go ahead and set the video IDs. Finally, I'm gonna go ahead and save the category. What this allows me to do is to continue to add new categories or update the video ID on existing categories and continually run this task without issue. I found this to be a really nice pattern as I can run this locally and refine my data. Then once I have a set of data that I'm happy with, after deployment, I can just run a single task to get all of my data in line. So now if we flip back over to the terminal and run Rails create categories task, then we flip over to the browser and refresh. You can see some of the new categories as well as the fact that they've been associated with this video. Let's go ahead and remove our two test categories. Then we can update the video. So next, a bit of cleanup. When we run our scaffold generator, Rails automatically creates a style sheet, scaffolds.scss, that we don't want. So we're gonna go ahead and destroy that now. If you were in fact using that file, then go ahead and leave it, that's fine. This is just specific to my application in this case. If we flip back over to the browser and view our categories, while the page is functional, it's just a bit rough. So we're gonna go ahead and update some views now before we deploy our application. So we're going to app, views, categories, index.html.erb. Here I'm going to paste the code I wanna use, and then we can walk through it. Here you can see we're adding in our header partial, and then we're giving it the title of categories. Next, in our container, we're gonna output the list of categories. We're using the Rails shorthand syntax that I've mentioned in several previous tutorials. Basically, this is just gonna loop through all categories and assume you have an underscore category.html.arb partial for it to render. We'll create that in a minute. Next, we are checking if there's a current user and that current user is an admin, we're going to head and add the new category button. This will allow our admin users to create new categories if necessary. If we flip back over to the browser and refresh the page, you'll see we're getting an error as we haven't created that partial yet. So let's go ahead and do that now. In categories, we're gonna click new file, underscore category.html.erb. Within this file, we're gonna go ahead and paste our code. Each category is going to be a list item with a link to the category show page. Here we're just wrapping this in a bootstrap badge. 
for a clean presentation. So if we flip back over to the browser again and refresh, as you can see, we have our categories. It doesn't look great and they're a little bit hard to read. So let's go ahead and add a quick bit of styling now. In our text editor under assets style sheets, you can see the scaffold generator created a categories SCSS file for us. Let's go ahead and delete the comments and then we're gonna paste in our category styles. As this isn't a styling video, I'm not gonna to spend too much time here. The last thing we need to do is to ensure that this file is pulled in. Since we do not have a required tree statement in our application.scss, we need to add this manually. So we'll do so now and then refresh. This is a little bit more readable and that'll work for our purposes. So now, as I mentioned, these are links. If we go ahead and click AWS, you can see we're now on the category show page. This looks a little rough. On this page, what we'd like to do is list out all the associated videos. So let's go ahead and update this view now. Back in our application, we can close assets and JavaScripts and then head down to the category show page. Here, we're just gonna paste our code and walk through it. We're gonna again use our header partial and then spit out the category name. Here, we're rendering our category instance variables videos using that same Rails shorthand. As it is being passed a collection of videos, Rails will default to looking into the videos view folder, attempting to find an underscore video.html.erb partial that it can loop over to render the videos. We've created this in a previous tutorial, as you can see below. We're not gonna mess with this, we'll just leave it as is. Go ahead and save and then refresh the page. As you can see, our page looks a lot cleaner and our videos render out just like they do in other sections of our site. Perfect. Typically, I would go through and update the category form, the edit page, the new page, and so on. Since that isn't so important as these aren't outwardly facing, I'm just gonna go ahead and skip to the video show page. On this page, we'd like to display the categories underneath the video. So if we flip back over in the browser and then click through the title to a video show page, you can see this page is pretty simply displaying the video up top and then the title below. If you're logged in as an admin user, you have the ability to edit. Below this title and above the edit link, I'd like to display the categories. So here in the video show partial, we're going to enter down a few times and then paste in our loop. Here again, we're using an unordered list. Again, we're using the Rails shorthand. In this case, we're going to output the video instance variables categories. Using that same logic, Rails is going to realize this is a collection of category objects and therefore look to the views categories folder for an underscore category.html.erb file. If it finds one, it will then loop over that file to display the categories in the collection it was given. Since we have that and created that for our categories index page, this will all just work. If we flip back over to the browser and then refresh, you can see our categories listed below. This will allow our users to click on different categories if they wanna find videos of similar topics like AWS in this case. Now that we have our feature complete, we need to go ahead and deploy our code. So we'll flip back over to the console. We're gonna clear the screen and then run get status. Here you can see all of the files we've updated. Typically you would want to go through each change and ensure it is appropriate to be a part of this feature branches commit. In an effort to save time, we're just going to add everything using get add dot. If we run get status again, you can see all the files are added. Next, we will commit with a message. Then we will push our code up to GitHub, our external code repository. Finally, as always, if you're working with a team, you would create a pull request and have your teammate review your code. Since my teammate Bear is a little lazy and sleeping once again, we're just gonna go ahead and move forward. To do so, we will check back out the master branch.
Then we will merge in our feature branch with get merge categories. Finally, we will push this back up to our external repository, GitHub. If you're interested in learning about Git or GitHub, I have some tutorials covering those topics that I'll link in the card as well as the description. Now that we've got everything up in our remote repository, we need to go ahead and deploy. We will do so with bundle exec cap production deploy. If you've never created a Rails deployment, I'll link to a video covering that topic in the card as well as the description below. Now that we've finished deploying our application, but before we check it out in the browser, let's go ahead and run our task that creates and assigns all of our categories. So the first thing we need to do is SSH into our server. We're gonna do so using SSH keys. If you're interested in a tutorial covering SSH keys, I can link that in the card as well as the description below. Hopefully you're noticing a pattern here. I try to break off various topics so that we don't have to continually talk over the same thing. Now that we're in our server, let's go ahead and see into our application. Now that we're in the current folder on our server for our application, we're going to run our one-off rake task. We'll do so with rails env equals production, bundle exec rails, and then the name of our task create categories. Once this completes, we can break out of our server and then flip back over to the browser, switch to our AWS Rails Live website and refresh. Now, if we click on the videos section and then click through to a video, we should see our categories listed below and there they are. If we click on a category link, you can see we have all of our categories or rather all of our videos in the AWS category. So I hope you've found this useful. And if you have, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That really helps out the channel. If you have any friends who you think may be interested in this type of content, I'd really appreciate it if you'd share with them. And as always, please remember to comment down below with any questions or tutorial requests. These requests really help me to figure out the types of videos that might be helpful to the largest group of people. So I really appreciate any requests you have. And with that, I'll catch you in the next ADBS Rails tutorial.